So ever since Unity showed this BMW demo that they made using ray tracing in Unity, people have been blowing their minds out. Is that how you say it? <laughs> and quite recently, Unity came out with a blog post looking like this, where they talk about ray tracing now available in HDRP using Unity 2019.3. And I, of course, being your Unity news reporter, I wanted to make a video dedicated for this and see what we can get right now. If you guys enjoy, make sure to smash like on this video. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so in this blog post, they say this, quote, along with package 720 of the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short, we're delivering a preview version of real-time ray tracing. HDRP is used for creating high definition and photorealistic visuals. The render pipeline is out of preview starting with package version 7.2.0 in 2019.3 and Unity version 2019.3.2 F1, which is required for real-time ray tracing. In a moment, we're gonna take a look at the requirements for ray tracing and see more detailed information and dive really deep into this blog post and even check out some things inside the Unity editor. But first, I wanna take 30 seconds of your time because this video is sponsored by Jason Weinman. Jason is an instructor and a developer who's made the incredible Unity Masterclass. The mastery course will teach you everything from the fundamentals and basics of game development all the way to using Unity for your professional projects. You'll start off by building a full 2D game using Unity and focus heavily on C Sharp to get a good grasp on coding. The course will then take you to 3D and even multiplayer. While working on these projects, Jason is going to be showing how to create the fundamentals for each project. And one thing I love about Jason's course is that he enables you the option to work along other students. And not only that, but he involves one-on-one -on -one interaction between you and himself. You can check out more about Jason's Unity Mastery course through the link in the description. Our link is also set up with a special discount code special to our community, so you will get 60% off the initial price. So continuing the blog post, they also say you can find more details about HDRP here, but that here is obviously not linked in the video, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description box if you guys wanna find out more information about HDRP. HDRP follows physically-based rendering rules, but it has limitations in its sliding processing due to the nature of the restoration pipeline. Real-time ray tracing allows you to unlock greater visual fidelity since it doesn't have the same visibility issues related to screen space approximation. It also allows you to avoid relying on pre-baking steps for lighting, which improves artists' workflows. Now, according to Unity, there are two different uses of ray tracing in HDRP using Unity. So number one is a mix of real-time ray tracing techniques and restoration, which they call the hybrid pipeline. And number two is a progressive path tracer. Now let's begin with the hybrid pipeline. The hybrid pipeline targets real-time applications. It relies on standard restoration techniques, specifically the HDRP pipeline, but it allows you to replace various effects with a ray traced version. This increases the final image quality since ray tracing doesn't suffer from the screen space approximation issues or other hard to solve problems that accompany the restoration approach. The effects that support ray tracing have a corresponding ray tracing effect setting in HDRP and it is controlled either via the ray tracing flag on an existing effect or a new volume setting that's dedicated to it. They also talk about ray traced reflections a little bit and this is what they say, quote, HDRP offers several options for reflections, including screen space reflection, reflection probe, planar reflection, and sky reflection. Ray traced reflection adds a new choice to this list with higher visual fidelity and it is accessible through the screen space reflection volume component. They also touch on ray traced global illumination, saying that the light mapper in Unity allows you to produce either light maps or light probes to store the indirect diffused lighting that the scene creates in an object. While the result this produces is visually compelling, it requires a baking step and can only be used to create static lighting. Ray Trace Global Illumination offers a new option used with the Global Illumination Volume component to replace the baked lighting. My favorite effect, Ray Traced Ambient Occlusion. So they say that the Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, or SSAO for short, is a great trick to simulate the complexity of indirect lighting in a scene. SSAO gives strong results, but it relies entirely on the data that's available on screen. So it can have visible limitations that can be improved by its ray tracing variant 
which is ray traced ambient occlusion. You guys know I love ambient occlusion. <laughs> I'm just like fanboying as I'm speaking. Uh, this feature is available through the ambient occlusion volume component. And I feel like this is a good step in the right direction for Unity, given the fact that HDRP is very much reliant now on the volume framework as a whole thing, not just the component itself, but volumes in general are becoming more of a thing in Unity, which I, I'm a big fan of it because that way you have more control over your environment settings, scene settings, and basically the entirety of your scene in just volumes. You can set a volume to become a local volume or you can basically meaning that it is only affecting a part of your scene, which you define, by the way, you have full control over that. Or you can say, hey, I want this volume to affect the whole scene and I have another volume which is going to affect just an area and I want that to be partially uh, affecting this part of the environment, but be prioritized higher up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can feel free to check out the video that I'm gonna leave a link to in the description box of this video at the end of this video. So <laughs> make sure you watch this first. Um, but yeah, that's gonna teach you more about the volume framework in Unity, especially using HDRP, which I think is a very useful thing if you're getting started right now. Moving on to ray traced shadows, this is what they say, quote, ray traced shadows can replace regular shadows in HDRP. This setup has a few advantages. In addition to avoiding any issues related to shadow map resolution and bias, ray trace shadows allow you to control the shadow penumbra, which is inside of the point light, spotlight, and directional light sources. So that's why they said point, spot, and directional, just to make sure you guys aren't confused. And they support color in for directional lights or semi-transparent shadows for point and spotlights. View dependent shadows for rectangular light are also supported. These options are available on the lights themselves. Oh, look at that. Unity doing my job for me. <laughs> they actually mentioned that. I don't know why I said that. Thank you, Unity. Very cool. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have been using HDRP with the shadows and especially contact shadows because that's what we're getting into. Um, I just want to know if you guys have been using the HDRP before. So this is what they say about contact shadows. Quote, sometimes shadow maps have trouble capturing details such as the contact between an object and its occluder due to low resolution render targets or various bias issues. HDRP offers an option to improve this situation without increasing the shadow map resolution called contact shadows. Contact shadows rely on ray marching of the depth buffer, which can cause some screen spaced artifacts to display. Using ray trace contact shadows instead avoids the appearance of these artifacts. This option is also available on the lights themselves. Moving on to a section about recursive rendering, this is what they say, quote, rendering multiple layers of refractive transparent materials can be a tricky thing to do with the restoration pipeline. HDRP only offers the option of a single refractive interface and ray tracing offers an accurate way to do it. The recursive rendering volume component allows you to perform multiple reflections and refractions for transparent objects. It requires that the object's materials use the ray tracing setting in rendering pass. There's also an option for ray traced subsurface scattering, which is, this is what they say about this quote, translucent surface rendering is a very complex problem that has only partially been solved in HDRP. The volume component subsurface scattering allows you to enable ray tracing to simulate this effect. Now for all y'all optimization people, we're getting to performance. So this is a whole section where we're gonna talk a little bit. So this is what they say in the start quote, Real-time ray tracing is very intensive in GPU usage. Each ray has a cost that needs to be considered in the final frame rate of the application. With the current state of hardware, enabling all of these ray tracing effects as the at the same time will result in a slow frame rate. We recommend, so this is what Unity says, we recommend choosing which effects to enable with care. For games in particular, it's advisable to enable only one or two effects at a time to avoid excessively high frame rate. For many ray tracing effects, HDRP offers two modes, quality and performance. There are additional options available depending on the chosen mode, so quality usually allows multiple bounce options for lighting effects, such as reflection or global illumination or GI for short, and uses less approximation in the shading model, which can increase graphic fidelity but is more GPU intensive. For these reasons, this setting is not recommended for games. Performance is the mode to use when targeting game frame rate, applying complex 
optimizations under the hood. You can learn more about the details of optimization performance in the talk, which they linked, and I'm gonna leave the same link in the description box of this video, and they continue presented at SIGGRAPH 2019. Some effects don't offer choices in mode settings because they only support quality mode, such as the recursive rendering effect. Ray trace global illumination and recursive rendering aren't recommended for a high frame rate target because they are quite expensive. It is useful to generate reference screenshots. You should also use the ray trace subsurface scattering feature economically as its costs can increase quickly. For games, it is also recommended to restrict ray traced effects to shadow, contact shadow, ambient occlusion, and reflections in performance mode. Other effects can be used for interactive non-game applications in performance mode when they are available, while any effects without a performance mode setting should be used sparingly to stay in real time. They also say that another option to help with performance is reducing the amount of work that occurs while performing ray tracing effects. The shader graph comes with a dedicated node for ray tracing that allows you to lower the cost of a material when it's rendered with ray tracing. Now, as you probably remember, we were covering the hybrid pipeline and now we're going to move over to the progressive path tracer. So this progressive path tracer pipeline targets high quality image rendering, often for interactive applications. So unlike the hybrid pipeline, it doesn't rely on restoration pipeline for shading, but it still does for post processing. So lighting in this mode is very accurate, similar to what can be achieved in the movie industry, but it requires some time to be processed. As such, this method generates a noisy image for a few frames until the image converges to its final result. A path tracing volume component is also available and replaces any other ray tracing or regular pipeline effect in the HDRP when it is enabled. This can also be useful to produce a reference comparison. So we're now getting close to the very end of this blog post as well as probably this video, um, but depends on how much we want to talk in the outro. But finally, what we're going to cover is number one, a couple things. Number one, what does it mean for ray tracing to be in preview, which is something that Unity wrote about. And number two, hardware requirements also stated by Unity. So stay tuned. We're just going to go over these two quickly. So first and foremost, what does it mean to be in preview? This is what Unity says, quote, ray tracing in HDRP 720 is in preview. It relies on DX12 and DXR low level APIs that are both in preview in Unity 2019.3.2 F1 and are thus missing some functionality. So ray tracing in preview means that some functionalities, user interfaces, performance, tools, and data formats could evolve with new versions and data migration is not guaranteed. It is not recommended to use preview features in production. They also stated a few things that ray tracing in Unity 2019.3 has limitations with, including there is no support for ray tracing on platforms other than DX12. It does not support deformers such as skin and vertex animation. It doesn't support VFX and terrain. It does not support several of HDRP's materials, including hair, stacklit, eye, and AXF materials. And finally, it does not have correct culling for shadows. And the final info here is hardware requirements. So full ray tracing hardware acceleration is available on the following GPUs, which they have a list. I'm not gonna read them all out loud, uh, but I basically don't have any of those. So I'm just gonna be like, all right, that's, that's too rich for me. <laughs> what they say is if you're computer has one of these graphics cards, it can run ray tracing in Unity. So before you open Unity, make sure to update your NVIDIA drivers to the latest version. Use NVIDIA Quadro or Studio drivers for the optimal creation experience and make sure that your Windows version is at least 1809. They also say that to get started with HDRP ray tracing, you can check out the introductory documentation, which is also going to be linked in the description because once again, I'm a very nice guy. I know you guys just want to click a link and get there. So I'm going to have that for you. They also say that the best and simplest way to get started with ray tracing in HDRP is to explore the sample project provided called Small Office Ray Tracing. It is already set up for ray tracing with effects enabled and configured properly, and it's available in a link which is also in the description. For those of you who are starting a new project, they also say that to help you on your journey when starting a new project from scratch and ensure that you have the right setup for your ray tracing, we offer an HDRP wizard 
the wizard validates your settings in the HDRP plus DXR tab and can fix them if they are incorrect, which is actually a super nice feature. It's a super, super neat feature. Um, it's a way more easy way to get started with HDRP in a new project instead of having to go like to the package manager, do all these like steps, which felt a little repetitive after some time of doing that. So I think the wizard is a fantastic feature. Otherwise, to manually set up ray tracing projects, you can also refer to Unity's documentation, which is also linked in the description. They've also stated that future development for real-time ray tracing includes more support for HDRP materials like Stacklit, Hair, basically the materials that are not supported right now, which makes sense. Um, geometry, so including terrain, which I'm actually really looking forward to, particles and stuff like that. Virtual reality, so VR is going to be supported. Better fallback to get improved scalability configurations. And they state that in Unity, 2020.1, I still say 2019 because I'm used to it. In Unity 2020.1, skinning, blend shape, and alembic deformation are supported. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I think we covered the entire blog post actually because I wanted to give you guys as much context as possible. Um, but still, I've also linked the full entire blog post in the description box of this video. So make sure to check out the link if you're interested in that. And if you have any questions or you need any help or want to just chat to other game developers, make sure to leave a comment on this video and make sure you join our Discord server by going to the link in the description or simply by going to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm. I want to do more of these commentary style videos where I just kind of sit down, talk and have something else playing in the background, maybe some like relevant context or relevant content to the video as well. But um, let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see more of this. I, I really enjoy making these, but I just want to make sure you enjoy watching them just as much as I enjoy producing them. Speaking of which, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune for new videos. Like I said, I'm going to be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server, so I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Peace out.